Good day, Kavibal, and welcome to our Speakers Demo Reel webinar series. For the demo teaching today, the topic will be on A Visayan Meet, Exploring the Story of Creation of Tungkung Langit and Aluncina. Good day, Kavibal, and welcome to our Speakers Demo Reel webinar series. For the demo teaching today, the topic Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. We will be posting the Zoom link in the comment section before our demo teaching. And the first 10 participants to join the Zoom meeting will be allowed to have close interaction with the speaker during the session and have an open forum after the demo teaching. The first 10 participants will serve as the students for the speaker's demo reel and will get a copy of the speaker's presentation at the end of the webinar. For those who will be chosen, make sure your microphones are turned off until asked to turn on. Do you enjoy learning with Vibal? Make your experience even more exciting by becoming a Vibal Group fan. Exclusive perks await fan subscribers. Get access to exclusive webinars. Enjoy free teaching resources. Check out exclusive content. Get discounts on Vibal products. All of these for only 55 pesos a month. Exciting, right? Subscribe as a fan now. Here's how. Visit, click, follow. First, visit Vibal Group's Facebook page. Then click Become a Supporter to purchase a monthly subscription. Lastly, follow the prompts that appear on your screen. But don't confuse this for top fan. Nah, -uh, it's a different thing. You need to follow the easy steps. Visit, click, follow. Be a Vibal Group fan and enjoy exciting perks today.
Good day again, Kavibao, and welcome to our Speaker STEM Reveal webinar series. For the discussion today, our topic will be on a Visayan myth, exploring the story of creation of Tungkung Langit and Aluncina. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. The Zoom link for this demo teaching is already posted in our comment section. And the first 10 participants to join the Zoom meeting will be, have, will be allowed to have close interaction with the speaker during the session and will have a copy of the presentation at the end of the demo teaching session. Again, all the teachers who will join as students for our demo teaching reel today will be able to get a copy of the presentation used today. Also, make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions in the comment box allotted during the session and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to our Vival webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Mr. Joram Kim Corquera is a graduate of Bachelor in Secondary Education major in English at the Philippine Normal University in 2011. He obtained his Master of Arts major in Communication degree at the Ateneo de Manila University. Currently, he is taking his degree of Doctor of Philosophy major in English Language Studies at the University of the Santo Tomas. He has been a teacher for almost a decade and has already taught English, literature, public speaking, and research classes. He also represented the Philippines in various international research and conferences about education and communication. He has been delivering CPD training sessions and teacher seminars across the country for more than three years. He is also into journalism as he has already experienced handling a number of student publications in various schools and universities including San Beda University and University of Santo Tomas. At present, he is working as a faculty member at the University of Santo Tomas Junior High School where he teaches communication arts and journalism courses. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Mr. Joram Kim Corquera. All right, so good afternoon to everyone. So to all our viewers of this, of course, uh, uh, YouTube webinar, isa pong magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Of course, uh, I hope that our session today would be very fruitful. Sana marami tayong matutunan. So on that note, allow me to share with you the slides that I have prepared for our discussion today. All right, there you go. Okay. All right, so uh, before I begin okay, our lesson today, allow me to give you a bit of a twist or whatsoever. Okay, siguro lagyan natin ng onting mga 21st century touch, right? So today, uh, of course, uh, I will be discussing all about a Visayan myth, of course, the story of creation of Tokong Langit and Alonsina. But before I start discussing, okay, before I start facilitating the activities that I have prepared, allow me first to tell you the strategy that I am going to use. Okay? So of course, in our... Uh, classes, digital classes, virtual classes, of course, admittedly, we do not have all the time in the world. Diba? We meet our students baga, twice a week, yung iba nga once a week, diba? that's very limited yung time. Okay? So, of course, since today we're going to teach literature, mahirap ituro ang literature kung limited time. Diba? Yung mga ginagawa natin, of course, activities dati, na mag mag magsasabay-sabay tayo ng magbabasa, and then, like, of course, right now, hindi dati siya magagawa. This is the very reason why for today's uh, demo teaching, I opted to use a flipped classroom. Okay? So in this flipped classroom, of course, strategy, all the students, okay, all the students must be able to have a clear understanding of the lesson already before, of course, the class officially begins. That is why, my dear students, ayan, nagtatumatanggap pa tayo ng mga studentes sa Zoom, okay, uh, Ms. Jillian will be forwarding to you a Google Docs link containing... Okay, of course, the story that we're going to read and, of course, a short video. So for the first part of our uh, session this afternoon, I would be discussing first all about flipped classroom. And while I'm discussing things about flipped classroom, 
okay, our dear teachers, our audience, our students for today, okay, will be, of course, reading the text and watching the short video that, of course, Ms. Zillian will be forwarding to them so that we will be able, of course, to uh, achieve okay, uh, the implementation, of course, of Philip's strategy later on. All right? So thank you, Ms. Zillian. I already saw uh, the message of Ms. Zillian in the chat box. So to the teachers, to our students today, please look at the chat box of our Zoom session. And you will be seeing there, of course, uh, the instruction, okay, of course, uh, the guidelines that you have to follow in our session uh, uh, to today, this afternoon, all right? So let's begin. Okay. So in all the webinars that I actually conduct, okay, uh, be it a teaching demonstration, be it a, a CPD training, okay, a teacher webinar, right? A YouTube a session, of an, an, an FB Live, I always begin with what I call the quote of the day. All right, so uh, today's quote, allow me to read it for you. Literature speaks the language of the imagination, and the study of literature is supposed to train and improve the imagination. All right, so this comes from North Rap Fry. Okay, so indeed, totoyan niba, literature refers, of course, to writings of a light, elegant, or excessively refined character. Okay, nowadays, of course, teaching literature is very important. Not only because it makes us, it makes the youth, the young ones, uh, aware of the cultural norms, the societal practices, and the like, but also because it helps the young ones, of course, imagine what the world should be and what they should do, of course, to make the world a better place. Right. So that is this is why today we're going, of course, to discuss a uh, specific literary piece. Okay. However, unfortunately, we cannot do any more, of course, the traditional activities like, for example, yung talaga magpapa-play tayo, role-play. Ngayon, pwede natin gawin parang mga, uh, for example, sa Zoom session, yung mga, di ba, nauso na rin yan, yung mga teleserye na, of course, talagang uh, ginagawa lang to, of course, the video conferencing platforms. That is why today we're going to maximize the use of technology. Okay? So as you can see, later on, you will be able to see me utilizing, of course, a number of applications that we can use, of course, to ensure that our students are able to learn the best way possible. Okay? Of course, uh, at the same time, not only uh, having the cl a clear understanding of the lesson, but of course, being able to address their learning preferences. Okay? Diba, tatandaan natin right now, of course, because of the coronavirus 2019, we cannot go out. Diba? This is why there is a sudden increase of cases, of course, lalo na to recently, diba, kaya the past two weeks, of course, we we're, 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 we're have... Uh, kumbaga, the government is implementing the enhanced community quarantine kasi nga tumasa lagi yung cases natin. So of course, because of that, we cannot let our students go out, uh, meet them face to face. So we have to stick with what we're doing, right? And that is of course distance learning. Okay? In distance learning, of course, we have modular distance learning and online distance learning. But since right now, we're using of course uh, this Zoom platform, we're using, of course, YouTube. Then, of course, um, I'm going to present the lesson okay, using online distance learning format. right? So in this kind of format, we really, rely, we really rely on the use of technology to connect with our students. So the technology allows us, of course, to be able to uh, be in one virtual classroom, of course, along with our students. Okay? We have to understand that right now we have to, of course, uh, bid farewell already Kumbaga, magpapaalam talaga tayo sa mga traditional activities. Why? Not only because we cannot do these things anymore, but also because we have to go for centered, uh, for student-centered activities. Okay? We have to, let's say, for, let, at least for example, uh, kumbaga, target din natin yung learners' preferences. We can have gamification and then the like. Right? So in your screen right now, you will see an image summarizing the status of education in our country. The books, of course, representing the traditional learning. The laptops, of course, showing online learning. And right now, of course, in this academic year and in the next academic year as well, we will be able, of course, to see a combination of both worlds, right? So some of us would still be able to maximize their, kumbaga, some of the strategies that they use for the old uh, kumbaga, 20th century. But of course, we have to ensure that we will be able to maximize the benefits of using technology, the benefits, of course, of online learning, leading, of course, to us implementing effectively 21st century education. And one of the many ways, of course, to do this one is really through the use of flipped classroom. Okay? 
So of course, when when we talk about flip classroom, pag tiningnan natin na literal, di ba biniliktad yung classroom, right? We literally flip the things that should be done at home and in school in flip classroom setup. Parang kagaya po ngayon. Di ba normally, pag nagdi-discuss tayo ng literary text, normally, the discussion of the text, we do it, di ba, inside the classroom. When the assessment, we do it, kumbaga sa bahay, yun ang assignment. Ngayon, binaliktad ko. Right? So right now, our teachers, our teacher students, okay, Uh, in this specific uh, teaching demo, are reading the text already so that, of course, they will be able to literally flip. So, naging assignment nila ngayon yung pagbabasa ng text. And ang gagawin natin mamaya would have to be the assessment. Right? So, when we talk about flip classroom, of course, whenever we use like pre-recorded materials, this kind of technique is what we call flip classroom. So, again, flip classroom is a pedagogical model in which the typical lecture and homework elements of our course are diverse. So, babalik na rin natin. The lecture, of course, which is the discussion of the text, the literary text, yung tungkong langit na lunsina, I'm not going to do it anymore, right? Because it would be done by the students. But for us to be able to ensure that they have a clear understanding, yung assessment, yun yung gagawin natin. Assessment and, of course, processing, right? So, it's a strategy where in short video lectures are viewed by students at home before the class session. While in class time is devoted to exercises, projects, or discussions. Okay, so the value of a flipped class is in the repurposing of class time into a workshop. So students, of course, later can inquire about the lecture content. Let's say, for example, may hindi sila na intindihan. Okay, so they would be able to test their skills in applying their own knowledge, interact with one another, of course, especially if we have hands-on activities. Right. So furthermore, when we talk about flipped classroom. Here, the teachers, us instructors, we function as coaches. Okay, we are facilitators, but we're not lecturers. Okay, we're not going to do a lecture anymore. Na talaga ng akin natin yung isang buong oras tayo lang ang magsasalita. Because if we're going to do that, then what do we expect our students to do? Na ako malamang na ako ten minutes palang tayo ng sasalita. Hindi na sila nakikinig sa atin. Malamang during the first ten minutes nag nagmobile legends nyan, nagbabalorant nyan, and then the line, right? So this flip classroom, this term is widely used to describe almost any class structure. That provides pre-recorded lectures followed by in-class exercises. That's why uh, the link that I forwarded to our teacher students today it does not only contain the story that we're going to read. It also contains a very short video, okay? Of course, uh, containing the summary of the text. So in this flip classroom, kaya sabi ko kanina student-centered, right? Why? Because it puts more responsibility for learning on the shoulders of our students. If they're not going to read, for example, the text, if they're not going to watch the pre-recorded lecture, then they would not be able, of course, to follow the discussion. So, of course, they would suffer. Kaya talagang sila, uh, they would do their part. Diba? Kumbaga, that's 21st century learning. The students take a lot of responsibility for their own learning. Right? So, in this flipped classroom style, ang sum ang summary sa atin sa tatlong uh, napakasimpleng steps. The first step, of course, is that we give our students the videos, okay? Of course, the students would be able to explore the content, uh, watch the video. Pag hindi nila naintindihan, they could actually uh, try to look for uh, more in, uh, resources online and then the like. After that, for the things in the classroom, of course, they would be making meaning. Okay, pwede tayong, uh, actually, pwede, uh, baga, you can give activities along with the videos, along with, of course, the, the things that you would be providing to them. Para pag nakita nila, ay parang medyo mababa ako dito. So they can talk to their classmate, they can actually research online, they can have online discussion, of course, to uh, really check kung tama yung pagkakaintindi nila. And then pagdating sa classroom, that's the time, of course, that we give them time to do their demonstration and, of course, apply what they have learned. Right? So dito natin susubukan kung tama ba talaga. At kung mali, of course, this is where we try to intervene. Kung baga dito natin ito tama yung mga mis misunderstanding and, of course, yung mga hindi naintindihan ng mga bata. So that's how the classroom goes, okay? So again, concept exploration, meaning making, and demonstration, right? So other things that you have to understand when we talk about flip classroom, F, of course, flexible environment. Educators often physically rearrange their learning spaces to accommodate a lesson or unit to support either group work or independent study. So itong flip, but the things activities, you can have pair activity, you can have group activity, you can have small groups, large groups, even a class activity. Later po ang gagawin natin, magkakaroon tayo ng class activity. So we're going to do it as a class. And we're also going to do it uh, 
individually later on. Meron ding individual para at least ma-check natin. Teka lang, naintindihan ba ng mga bata? Baka mamaya ang nakaintindi lang ilan. So meron din tayong individual assessment. Right? So L, of course, learning culture. Students are actively involved in knowledge construction. Hindi pwedeng kay teacher lahat. Gone are the days that teachers do spoon feeding. Gone are the days that teachers, of course, gave a lot, gave long lectures. Tapos na yon. Tapos na yung panahon na yon. Right? So right now, we facilitate activities even if this is online learning. We have to find ways, right? So that we will be able, of course, to engage them, make them participate, and of course, evaluate their learning in a very meaningful manner. Right? I, of course, is intentional content. We teachers, we flip learning educators. We will be the one to determine what we we need, what we would be teaching. Di naman tayo mo bibigay lang ng basta basta ng video. Eh. We're not going to ask our students to look for videos, but we're going to give a pre-recorded video. So in other words, tayo mismo we determine what what we will be teaching, and of course, what student ah uh, kung bagal the materials that the students of course should be exploring would also be coming on our own. Nasa mga sujante nay if they want of course to go beyond do sa mga binigay natin. And lastly, of course, professional educator. Right? So a lot of teachers think, paano tayo naging professional doon? We're not teaching our students. Uh, we're, not doing this, we're not doing lectures. Actually, kapag nag-discuss tayo, siguro somehow, pag tinignan natin, pag nag-reflect tayo, yun pa nga yung medyo less professional. Eh. Why? Because we're only doing what we want to do. But we're not doing what our students want to, list, uh, to, to get from us. Our students are tired from this uh, lectures and, uh, already. We have already to, of course, adapt to the changes. Okay? Uh, even before the pandemic, talaga namang nauso na to, kumbaga talaga, we facilitate learning, but we do not, of course, kumbaga give long lectures anymore. Siguro maliban na lang talaga kapag very uh, mahirap talaga yung lesson, talagang very nakakalito. But of course, we still have to find uh, ways to be creative and innovative uh, so that we will be able, to, of course, to find the best activities uh, na mapafacilitate natin yung learning ng mga bata. Okay? So of course, professional educator because... Uh, Just like what we're going to do later, I would be able, of course, to give immediate feedback, relevant, dun sa moment na yun. Then, of course, assess their work. Right? So, what would be the biggest differences of traditional and flip? Pag sinabi natin traditional, of course, students often try to capture what is being said at the instant the speaker says it. They don't have time to reflect. Diba? Kung baga parang, kunwari nagliliterature, ay, naisip mo parang, ay, kunwari ko yung character na to. Maya-maya, na-imagine mo, Pagbalik mo, wala ka na. Nawala ka na sa lesson, right? Unlike in the flip classrooms, the students, of course, can re-watch the videos, can, of course, uh, try to understand. Hindi pa nila naintindihan. They can actually uh, go for uh, more sources para mas maintindihan pa nila, right? However, of course, meron din downside tong flip classroom. Okay? Number one, of course, it's an easy model to get wrong. Okay? So, require careful preparation. Pag namali si teacher ng video, wala na. Diba? So, a lot of effort and time for the part of the teacher kasi we have to prepare the exercises ahead of time. We have to prepare the materials that we're going to give to them. Okay? Additional work, lalo na kung di tayo marunong mag-record ng sarili nating video. And of course, prone to complaints, lalo na pag hindi alam ng mga parents, kunwari, kinuha mo sa YouTube yung video, sabihin ng mga sudyante, Mami, si teacher, kumuha lang ng video, tapos magagalit si Mami, nagabay tayo 50K, tapos uh, lahat pala downloaded lang sa YouTube. Of course, the parents would not understand if we're not going to explain to them. Right? And of course, at the same time, costly to kasi daming gadgets na kailangan. Okay? So th those are some of the reasons, of course, why uh, uh, flip uh, classroom actually, yung mga downsides. So furthermore, uh, teachers fail to direct students' attention effectively. Kasi dito, sa flip classroom, kapag ang estudyante hindi nanood ng video, technically may hirapan silang sumabay. So the teacher, of course, must be able to find ways to ensure that the students would be doing their part. Students do not perform what they're being asked to do. Yun nga, pag di nila ginawa yan, pa, paano mangyayari? Student-centered yan. Students abuse the use of technology. Right? So students are not able to apply knowledge in novel situations. Diba? Parang minsan, shallow yung understanding nila. And of course, educators are not being able to address diverse needs of the students. Right? So... Kasi nga, pag-flip nga siya, of course, you're assessing na lang. Yung, baga, uh, yung activities na pinaprepare mo, more often than not, hindi siya differentiated. Pero actually, I, I tried before, uh, di-differentiate ko sa flip classroom. Nagawa ko naman sa, but of course, uh, it would demand a lot of time and effort sa part ni teacher. Alright? So right now, I hope na panood na ng mga teachers natin uh, yung video na sinend ko. So of course, as I reach this slide, this signals, of course, that we're going to start already with our lesson. Alright? So our uh, students, uh, 
Uh, I'm I'm looking at the chat box. So kapag may tanong po, let's say for example, teacher students, you have questions, uh, you have things that you want you wish to clarify, you may actually send it in the chat box. All right? So let's begin. All right. So today of course, uh, let us have first our learning objectives. So at the end of the session, the students are expected of course number one to define literature, number two to note significant details, three analyze context to identify the character's point of view. Four, identify cause and effect. And five, of course, analyze information to give possible judgments and solutions. So again, these are our learning objectives. So in our activities, we're going, of course, to uh, try our best to ensure that we would be able, of course, to have a clear understanding of these things uh, at the end of the session. Right? So, But before that, allow me to ask you first. I have here two questions. First question, why do people read and write? Okay, anyone from the class? If you wish to answer, you may type the word recite in the chat box and I will be calling you, right? Before you turn on your microphone, because I don't want answers given in chorus, please type the word recite in the chat box uh, and then I will be calling you. And then that's the time that you turn on your microphone and start answering my question. So let's begin. Why do people read and write? Anyone from the class? Okay, do not be shy. <laughs> All right, Miss Raquel. Sure. People read to um, gain more knowledge and information. Um, okay, thank you. That's that's a very good answer. Definitely, of course, through reading to writing, we, we, we actually get, of course, new set of information. Of course, expand our knowledge. Very good, Ms. Raquel. Thank you. What about the others? What about the others? Yes, Miss Isabel. Uh, sir, uh to express their feelings or emotions. So they tend to write and to read books. Okay, thank you, Ms. Isabel. So of course, uh, it's a way of expression of feelings, emotions, of course, through writing and of course, through reading. Very good. Now, next question. What makes you read and write? What about in your case? In your case, what makes you read and write? Anyone from the class? What makes you read and write. Anyone, please type the word recite. So earlier, you already mentioned, okay, sir, so people read and write because it's a way of expressing, of course, emotions and then the like. What about you? Why do you read and why do you write? Yes, sir, Joseph. Go ahead, sir, Joseph. I think your mic. Okay, sir, Joseph. I can hear you already. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, uh, what? My answer is uh, people, people read with emotions because they want to express their feelings and they want to, they want to write their own, own words in, in, their, uh, in their feelings and in their, uh, in their emotional thought. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's interesting po. Uh, but may I ask, what about in your case? Why do you read and why do you write? Aside from the fact that it's part of our job. Okay? As a student, why do you read and why do you write? Okay, Ms. Raquel? Sir, for me... Um, for Ms. Raquel, I hardly hear you. Can you please speak louder? Sir, personally, uh, I read and write for, for pleasure, sir. Okay. So it's for amusement, right? So for pleasure, you right? So... You enjoy, of course, reading and writing. All right, so thank you. So in other words, when we talk about reading and writing, we talk about literature. There are a lot of reasons, right? Uh, why people read and write, why we actually read and write, because we get a lot of things, of course, through reading and through writing. Okay, and of course, through reading and writing, we get to meet some of our some of the characters. Like for example, in your screen, we have Captain Marvel. We have, of course, Percy Jackson. We have Naruto. We have Darna, if we're talking about Philippine literature, if we're talking about, of course, uh, Anglo-Saxon or world literature, we have Wonder Woman. And of course, we have Harry Potter. Right? So what's common about these things? All right? I, I, I think someone's uh, microphone is turned on. All right? So there's students. Please check that on. Okay? If you're not yet uh, recognized, again, answers should not be given in chorus. All right? So thank you. So this, of course, characters are all, what they call this one, they're all fictional characters. And later on, uh, we would be able to know two more fictional characters. 
But before I introduce you to these fictional characters, I'd like you to complete this statement first. Okay? If I will be given a chance to be a fictional character, I will choose to be blank because blank. Anyone from the class? Type the word recite if you wish to answer. If you would be given a chance, like for example, to become a fictional character like Naruto, uh, Harry Potter earlier, and then like, uh, what a specific character would you want to be? Who would you want to be and why? In from the class? Anyone? Okay, Joseph? Sir, uh, if, if, if I will be given a chance to be, uh, to be a fictional character, I will, I will choose to be Harry Potter. Why Harry, Harry Potter, Joseph? Okay, because Harry Potter, Harry Potter have magic, and Harry Potter is like, is like, um, para siya, para siya yung, ma, uh, inaapi sa una, inaapi, mm -hmm. pinahihirapan, pero sa, tsaga niya at talino niya, pinak, pinakita niya sa mga, kas, sa Hogwarts, yung kanyang kakayahan, at siya pala yung hinaharap ni na pinakamalakas ng wizard or sorcerer. Parang tipong, and, 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 yeah. opo. And you wanted to be someone like him, right? Who yes, learned from his po, experiences. Pinahirapan right? siya eh. Pina, kinut siya, inapi. Kinut siya, inapi siya. Pero right? siya, pala ang, siya pala ang magwawagi sa bandang huli. Okay, thank you, Joseph. Yun. All right, thank you, thank you. So for Joseph, he wanted to be Harry Potter, maybe because Harry Potter, of course, showed uh, really perseverance, determination that he would be able, of course, to reach his goals, all right? And maybe yes, Joseph, likewise, is the same uh, kind of person, right? Uh, who would always uh, do what he can do, what he can offer, of course, to ensure that he would be able to make his dreams a reality, all right? Thank you, Joseph. Uh, let's listen to one more. And on from the class, the what class? about the others? Thank you, Joseph. That's a very good answer. What about the others? And on in the class, who would like to share other answers to us? Aside from Joseph? Okay, no one? All right, so if not, then let's proceed. Uh, okay, Jillian, Miss Jillian. Good afternoon, sir. If I'm going to be a fictional character, I'd like to be like Armin Arlet in... Attack on Titan, right? Attack on Titan. Because even uh, he knows he's lacking on physical strength, he um, he gives his best when it comes to thinking wisely and being objective. And also, he is so selfless. All right. Thank you, Miss Jillian. I, I, I love the, uh, I, the explanation, of course. Uh, of course, Miss Jillian prefers to be that character. Maybe because she saw, of course, some similarities, right? Uh uh, with her and, of course, the character that she mentioned, which is, of course, Armin. All right, so thank you, Ms. Jillian. Now let's proceed, of course, to our next slide. So later again, uh, it's actually good that you know some of these fictional characters because later in the discussion that we're going to have today, we're going to meet, of course, two uh, new fictional characters, of course, under Philippine literature. But when it's all about literature, let us try to define it first very quickly. Okay? Again, literature is the written record of man's uh, best thoughts, feelings, ideals, and aspirations presented in artistic form, touched by the author's personality, and written in an enduring language. So again, it refers to body artistic writings of a country or period that are characterized by beauty of expression and form, and universality of intellectual and emotional appeal. So kaya nga pag sinabi natin na literature, artistic lagi yung pagkakasulat, right? So it does not mean that when we talk about literature, it does not mean that... Uh, it is going to be uh, using direct language. Pwede gumamit si author ng indirect language, ng mga figurative lang uh, expression, right? flowery language, of course, para mas maging artistic pa yung kanyang atake. But of course, when we talk about uh, literature, it reveals author's personality because uh, you would see it uh, based on sa actions ng mga characters, sa flow ng events, you would see, of course, the how the culture of that specific writer was depicted in the story, was, of course, uh, the societal beliefs, and then the like. Aside from, of course, the things that this specific writer wants to express, like his thoughts, his feelings, his ideals, and, of course, his aspirations, right? And today, of course, we're going to discuss one literary piece, specifically under uh, what we call uh, Philippine literature. 
So we talk about Philippine literature, of course, in grade seven. Okay, this is what we actually discuss, right? English seven, right? So we have Philippine literature. So again, the title of the text would be uh, Tungkong Langit and Alonsina. Right, so earlier, my dear students, my dear teacher students, I have forwarded to you, of course, a short video. I hope you're done watching it because right now it's time for us to assess your understanding. So we're going to have a very simple activity. We're going to have a Kahoot game. All right, so I'd like you to answer uh, this specific pin. Okay, so please go uh, to Kahoot.it, my dear students, my dear teacher students, please go to Kahoot.it and use this game pin. The game pin is, all right, let's wait for it to finish loading, 4646118. Again, teacher students, please go to this game pin. Uh, uh, please go to kahoot.it and use the game pin 4646118. All right. So again, we're going to have this kahoot. Okay, activity to ensure that you were able, of course, to understand already uh, the text by reading, of course, the text and, of course, by watching the video, uh, which was forwarded to you before the class, uh, of course, uh, before our class today. Right? So we already have five students. Okay, how many are we waiting? Uh, I think we're, we're still waiting for some. Right? Again, teacher students, please go to kahoot.it. And use the game pin 4646118. All right, there you go. Okay, so we'll wait for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, we'll officially begin. All right. So again, for Kahoot, please be reminded of the following. Number one, of course, this is a speed game. Right. So if you will be able to choose the correct answer, okay, okay, in the shortest time possible, then your score, of course, would be higher. Right. But of course, you have to be very careful, all right? Because if you will be getting wrong answers, then of course, you're not going to receive points for that specific round, all right? So in 15 seconds, we'll begin, okay? All right. So last reminder, while we're playing Kahoot and while we're waiting for the others, please listen to this very carefully. There would be questions here, okay, that I would like those students who would be able to give the correct answer uh, later on to explain. So later, if you will be able to get the correct answer, the signal would be, uh, the, the word that we're going to type would be correct. And, and then I'm going to call you, of course. That's the, that's the, that means that you're going to explain to us why your answer is actually correct. Right? So, but we're not doing it for all the rounds. We're only doing it for specific rounds where most of the students would be able to uh, get a wrong answer. All right? So let's begin. Okay, so Tongkong Langit and Aluncina. All right? <coughs> First question. Tungkong Langit and Aluncina is a story that originated in blank. Tarlac, Panay, Baguio, or Manila? So this is a trivial question. Let's try to see. If you were able, of course, not only, if you did not only rely to the uh, paper that I have forwarded, right? So the correct answer here is, is a story that originated in Panay, right? So the answer here is Panay, all right? So the others were not able to answer. You're only given 20 seconds, by the way, to answer. So you have to answer really quick, uh, okay? Answer quickly, all right? So Isabel is leading, followed by Chart Fox, Ariel, Charm, and Levi, or Levi. Question number two, how many gods appeared at the beginning of the text? At the beginning of the text, how many gods appeared? Okay. All right. So, of course, there are two gods, right? So, may I ask those students who got the correct answer, please type correct in the chat box. Anyone who would like to name the two gods who appeared in the text? Who are those two gods again? Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Isabel, can you please uh, name the two gods? From the title, title itself, sir, Tongkong Langit and Alonsina po. Very good, right? So we have two specific uh, main characters, of course, in the text. We have uh, Tongkong Langit and Alonsina. So we have two, not one, right? So next, thank you, Isabel. Uh, Isabel is as well leading. Question number three. Which of the following statements shows Tungkong Langit's chief concern? What's the answer?
Okay, uh, four students got the correct answer. So, five students answered to Mary Aluncina. So, now may I ask these four students to type the word correct in the chat box, please? Okay, and let's try to see. Okay, why did you answer uh, uh, this one to impose order over uh, the whole confused setup of things and not to Mary Aluncina? Yes, Isabel, would you like to share with us uh, your answer? Sir, uh, uh, okay. Ah, uh, yung natatandaan ko po dun sa right. text po. Ah, uh, uh, tokong langit is a deity po or god po. Yeah. So it means po ah uh, sabi rin po doon siya ah uh, doon sa kanya manggagaling yung lahat daw po bukod kay Alan Sina. Ayun po. All right. Thank you. Ah, uh, thank you Isabel. Actually, uh, Isabel is actually correct but to add uh, to her answer, at the beginning of the text, it was mentioned. In the beginning, everything was shapeless and formless, right? And because of this, Tungkong Langit, of course, uh, wanted to impose order over this confused setup of things, right? So that is his priority over, of course, the fact that he wanted to marry Aluncina, right? So that's why the red, the, the red one is, uh, the triangle is the answer and not, of course, the diamond, right? So I hope those who answer diamond will be able, of course, to have that in mind. Remember, he decided to leave, of course, the, uh, his place, okay, the palace, of course, uh, to to do this one, right? And and uh, despite the fact that Aluncina, of course, would be left alone there, right? So next, question number four: Which of the following statements shows Aluncina's work? So, what is Aluncina's main work in the story? <laughs> All right, so three students answered to sit by the window of their heavenly home, right? Uh, the yellow one, to love Tungkong Langits endlessly. So we have uh, three students also answered that one. So may I ask uh, these three students, a volunteer from these three students to explain to us why the diamond and the blue answer, uh, the blue uh, shape, of course, is the one that is correct and not the yellow one. And after, anyone from the class? Please type the word correct in the chat box if you want to recite. Anyone from the class? Where the three students? Okay. Anyone from the class? All right. So we'll not proceed to the next question, not unless someone answered this one. Okay. Again, Isabel. Isabel is very active. I hope the others would likewise be the same. Right, Isabel? So yung natatandaan ko po dun sa text po. Uh, okay. Inano siya, parang identify si Aluncina na ang ginagawa lang niya is ay yung karakteristik niya is tamad and jealous po. Yeah, Tapos, very good. Ayun lang po. <laughs> very good, Isabel. Right? So, Alonzino was describing the text as a lazy, a jealous goddess who sat at the, at the window all day doing nothing. Right? So, that is his main work. Uh, that is her main work, her main job. Right? So, it's not really to love Tungkong Langit endlessly. Right? So, that, that's why, of course, the blue one is the correct answer. Okay? So, Isabel is still leading, followed by Chart Fox. Let's proceed to question number five. How long did Tung Tung Langit court Aluncina? Hours, months, days, or years? Let's see. Six students have answered already. Seven. There we go. Okay, so of course the answer is years, right? So... Aluncina, of course, being a goddess also, of course, hindi yan, kumbaga, hindi yan, um, hindi naging madali, of course, kay Tungkong Langit, of course, to win Aluncina. And of course, I think you would be able to see it with uh, what happened at the end day, no? Talagang pinatunayan din, of course, ni Aluncina, of course, that she has her own decision, right? So, next, Isabel is still leading. Question number six, it was in this place where order and regularity first took place. It was mentioned in the story. So, which part? Okay, of course, it's the highest realm of the eternal space. So, mukhang medyo nalilito pa yung mga classmates nyo, no? Right? But of course, you, I hope that you would be able to look for these things in the text because these things are actually provided there. Diyan nagsimula, di ba? Diyan, of course, sinimula na itong kong langit, right? So, next. 
question number seven. Which of the following words was not used to describe tungkong langit in the text? Right? How did the author describe tungkong langit? Okay, very good. Uh, yeah, the, uh, only one got the correct answer, right? So he was not described to be intelligent. In the text, he was described to be very, uh, of course, uh, he was described to be very loving, right? So loving is not the correct answer. He was described to be hardworking, industrious, and of course, kind. But it was not mentioned in the text that he was intelligent, right? So although, of course, I think... Uh, most of you answered, I did not answer intelligent because you would be seeing it from the personality of Tung Kung Langit. But of course, the author did not use this word to describe, of course, Tung Kung Langit, right? Let's proceed with the next one. Question number eight. Which of the following words was not used to describe Aluncina in the text? If you listen to Isabel's answers or answer earlier, she already talk about this thing, right? Okay, so it was not mentioned, of course, that she is insecure, right? So it was mentioned that she's jealous, she's lazy, and she's selfish. But it was not mentioned that she's insecure. But I think some of you uh, got confused because uh, you would be thinking that she was insecure because of her actions, right, in the text, right? But it was not mentioned by the author, okay? So you have to be very careful. You have to, be, uh, you have to analyze, of course, the question being given to you, okay? So next, Isabel is still leading. Question number nine. Why did Tung Kung Langit need to stay away from home and from Aluncina for a period of time? And I hope everyone would be able to get a correct answer on this one. Okay, so to put an end to the chaotic disturbances, right? So that's correct, right? So at least majority of the students got the correct answer, right? So let's proceed to the next one. Question number 10, right? So let's make this one fast because we don't have a lot of time left. What did Aluncina send to spy on Tungkung Langit? Remember, she has powers, right? So because she was too jealous, because of course she wanted to ensure that Tungkung Langit is not seeing another goddess, Okay, aside from her, what did she send to spy on Tongkong Langit? Okay, very good. So again, majority of the students got the correct answer, right? So at least we're getting uh, a better uh, result right now. Of course, the answer is here is sea breeze, right? It was mentioned by the author. Sea breeze, it's not water grabs, it's not wild birds, and it's not healthy soil, right? So Isabella is still leading, followed by Ariel, Anne, Levi, and Rosie. Question number 11, who is more powerful? Alun sino ito kung langit? I'm curious. All right, so six students answered Aluncina, four students answered Tungkong Langit. But the answer here is Tungkong Langit. I'm curious, uh, those who answered Aluncina, uh, anyone from the class who would like to explain why you answered Aluncina? Please type the word recite in the chat box to be recognized. Anyone from the class, why did you answer Aluncina? I'm curious. Uh, of course, there might be some reasons that we would be able, of course, to get from you. Anyone from the class? Okay. Or if you don't want to answer, then maybe we can ask the four students who got the correct answer. Please type the word correct if you wish to answer. Anyone from the class? Why Aluncina and why Tungkong Langit? Anyone? Uh, please type uh, correct in the chat box or recite in the chat box if you wish to answer. Anyone from the class? All right. So I think you're too shy to answer. All right, so okay, I'll explain to you why Tungkong Langit because, of course, he was the one who created everything, right? Uh, the story of creation, right? Uh, everything started with a, for a formless, shapeless, but because of Tungkong Langit's power, 
right? Uh, he was able, of course, to uh, create the moon, the stars, and everything, of course, that exists. And so that's why uh, the answer here is the planet of Mount Alunsina. Right? So next question. Okay. Question number 12. Because he lost his temper, Tungkong Langit, what? Okay, of course, they vested his wife of powers. All right, very good. Okay, nine students got the correct answer. That's a good number. Let's proceed to the next one. Question number 13. Because Alunsina left Tongkong Langit, Tongkong Langit felt extreme blank. Right? This no more. I think your microphone is turned on. Okay, very good. Of course, she was very sad, right? It's not enjoyment, right? She wasn't. Ha he was not happy because Aluncina left him, right? So, of course, if you read the text, you would be able to find out that he was actually very sad because, of course, uh, Aluncina decided, of course, to uh, leave him alone, right? So, Ariel is now leading. Question number 14. Which of the following does not belong to the group? Analyze the question. Tungkong Langit took his wife treasure jewels and scattered them. Tungkong Langit made a big basin of water below the sky. Tungkong Langit came down to the middle world and created the land. And Tungkong Langit created the birds to look for his wife, Alicina. So all of these are actions, right? Done by Tungkong Langit, right? To persuade Alicina to come back. Except for one. He did not create the birds, of course, to look for his wife, right? But he did, of course, uh, use uh, his wife, treasure jewels, and scattered it, of course, which eventually became the moon, the sun, I mean, the, the stars and then the like. Okay, of course, the, the sea, right? The middle word that created the land and then the like. So all of these things are some of the things done by Tungkong Langit to show, of course, his love and his loyalty, of course, to Aluncina. Okay? So next, question number 15. Which of the following does not belong to the group? Oh, these things. These things were done. Uh, how? Try to analyze which of the following does not belong to the group. Of course, the answer here is meteor, right? Because the stars, the sun, and the moon, of course, these three things are created from Aluncina's uh, property, right? The necklace, the sukline of Aluncina, of course, her crown, right? Except for the meteor, right? So, okay. Next, question number 16, last three. The people believe that the rain is black. So whenever it's raining, because of what happened, they believe that the rain is blank. Okay, of course, Tungkong Langit's tears, right? They would think, okay, Tungkong Langit is very sad right now, up above there. It's very sad, so he's crying. That's why, of course, uh, we're having the rain, right? So, and last, <clears throat> last two. Uh, which of the following emotions is the root of Aluncina's negative actions? Why did Aluncina leave Tungkong Langit? Because of what emotions? Okay. How was she described by the author? It was already mentioned earlier by their, by their teacher students. Of course, because of jealousy, right? Because of jealousy, because of being too jealous. Uh, she felt that, of course, uh, she's not receiving the attention that she actually deserves, and Tungkong Langit is giving too, atten too much attention, of course, to other stuffs, right? She was too jealous, because, and because of that, he decided, of course, to leave Tungkong Langit, right? So, and last question, which of the following emotions is the root of Tungkong Langit's negative actions? All right, of course, the answer here, nine students got it. Of course, it's anger. All right, very good. So let's see who are the winners. Third place, 11 out of 18, we have teacher Levi, teacher student Levi. 
Second place, we have teacher, student, Isabel. And the first place, of course, we have teacher, student, Ariel. So congratulations to the three of you. Okay, very good. Rank four, of course, we have teacher, student, Anne, and teacher, student, Chart Fox, and then, of course, fifth. All right, so now, Hopefully, of course, after this specific Kahoot activity, you were able, of course, to have or to grasp okay, a deeper understanding of the text. So for us to better understand, if you were able really to understand it after listening to the explanation of your classmates, to my explanation also to some of the answers earlier, uh, to the question earlier, I'd like you now to have this specific activity. But this time, we're going to do it uh, uh, through quizzes. So I have here 15 questions, but you can answer this one uh, very quickly. So please go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the go, uh, join code 023686. So we're having this activity so that I would know after the Kahoot who, stay, who are still the students who would be needing my help, of course, uh, more explanation, okay? more activities to, uh, to be able to better understand, of course, the lesson. So again, please go to join my quiz. Dot com and enter the code 023686. Again, please go to joinmyquiz.com and use the code 023686. All right? So this time, the questions would not be appearing anymore in my screen. It would only appear in your screen. Okay? So... Let's begin, okay? I'll begin in 15 seconds. Anyway, those who, are, those who will not be able to enter may enter while the others are already answering, right? So there you go, okay? So the only thing, of course, that appears in my screen would have to be your ranking, but the questions are, of course, uh, can be accessed in your screen. So of course, take that all the time that you'll be needing, of course, to be able to answer these questions carefully, okay? Okay. All right, so I'll give you three more minutes to answer. All right, so looking at the accuracy rate, right now we have 85%. So this only shows, of course, that uh, our Kahoot activity earlier, okay, we, we were able, of course, to use it to gain a deeper understanding of the lesson because uh, the scores earlier were not as good as the, uh, the, uh, the one that we're having right now. So we have 83% accuracy. So this is pretty good, okay? All right. 
So we'll wait for the others to finish. Okay, last one minute. Okay, one more minute po for everyone to finish answering this one. Right now we have 85% accuracy, so this is pretty good. 86%, yeah, good. Okay, so right, so we'll end this we'll end this activity already at 87% accuracy, right? So let's try to end this because we don't have a lot of time uh, left. So winners, third place, we have Rosie. Second place, we have Ariel. And first is, of course, we have teacher Levi, right? So, of course, uh, this became 69 because I ended it, right? So those who were not able to answer some of the questions, automatically it was marked wrong, right? So, but er earlier we had like 86% accuracy. So that's good. That's pretty good. Of course, that only shows that you were able to understand the lesson better after our discussion through our Kahoot. So right now, we're going to have our reflection. But since we don't have time, of course, we're just going to have it as an assignment. So what are we going to do in this Padlet? Okay? What are we going to do in this Padlet? So I'm going to share the link okay, of this Padlet. Okay? I'm going to share the link of this Padlet to our chat in the Zoom session. Okay? Uh, please check it. Right? So what are we going to do there? Right? So there, here, we're going to have this assignment. So for the girls, I wanted to, short, to write a short letter address to Kung Langit. Tell him what he did wrong and what he needs to do to receive Aluncina's forgiveness. Also include what you think he must do to avoid repeating the same mistakes. Because I'm assuming that since you are girls, you understand, of course, where Aluncina is coming from. And for the boys... I wanted to write a letter addressed to Aluncina, explain to her the side of Tungkong Langit, and inform her what she should do to avoid the feeling of being jealous. Also include some tips that you can give her to be able to support Tungkong Langit, Tungkong Langit in all his endeavors. Of course, because as a god, uh, definitely have a lot of things to do, right? So, but uh, for you to be able, of course, to answer this assignment effectively, I have here with me a worksheet that I'd like you to answer. So again, for the boys, you're going to do Aluncina, and for the girls, you're going to do, of course, Tungkong Langit, so that you will be able, of course, to understand where the opposite gender is coming from. So here in this character analysis, I would be give, giving the Forza format to you later on. Okay, you're, right, you're going to write the story title here, the character, and of course, the traits, and then, of course, the, ev the, the, the evidences, of course, uh, why, why we were able, of course, to come up with the idea that this specific character uh, is really possessing this specific trait, right? So again, this would be your assignment today. Okay, and you're going to upload it, of course, in the Padlet link that I have provided to you. So in this online learning wall, we would be able, of course, to see uh, your, of course, letters. And we're going, of course, to present it during our next session, right? So do you have questions? If not, can you please type none in the chat box? Okay, there you go. So thank you. All right. So if there are no questions, then we will be ending, of course, our class today. All right. So thank you for listening uh, to our student teachers, our teacher students rather. I hope you were able, of course, not only to learn things about Tungkong Langit and Aluncina, but I hope you were also able, of course, to learn how we would be able to maximize technology and, of course, uh, facilitate a student-centered uh, class discussion activities. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, teachers. Now we will proceed to our question and answer portion. If our teachers here in the Zoom meeting has any question to ask or any questions to ask our teacher today or Sir Joram today, you may type in your questions in our chat box or you may unmute your microphone. So if you have any questions for regarding the method used, the story or anything for that you'd like to ask, you are free to do so. And also to our YouTube viewers, you may post your questions in our comment section so that our speaker may answer them. All so right. for the meantime, if our teachers here doesn't have questions yet, we have a question from YouTube. And the question is from Sally Lim. Do you recommend this type of strategy 
to be applied to young learners po. Yeah. I, of course I do. Uh, I do. Why? Because uh, just like what, we have to understand that our students nowadays, they're not... Baga, they're, they're, uh, I mean, they're born for technology. They have innate skills in terms of using technology. So in other words, uh, we can actually have them, of course, utilize these applications, but we have to guide them. Okay? Anyway, uh, since, they, since, the, since, of course, they're born for technology, they're members of the Generation Z, uh, this is their culture. So we expect, of course, them to be able to enjoy and understand things better when we actually integrate technology in the things that we actually do. So the answer, of course, is yes. But you have to, of course, guide them especially if this is, is going to be the first time that we're going to use this specific application. Right? Thank you very much, sir. Another question from our YouTube viewer from Leon Torno. Can the flip classroom be used in any topic and any subject po? Uh, flip classroom, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you can actually use it. However, of course, there would be specific lessons na talagang sabihin natin na medyo mas mahirap siyang gawin for your flip, right? But if you're going to try to be really creative and innovative, na talagang lalo na kung yung, yung video lecture na yun ay ikaw mismo ang laman, yung pre-recorded ikaw mismo talaga nag-record sa sarili mo, of course, uh, it would be uh, really fitting. Pero of course, if there would be, like for example, lessons are too complicated, talagang you cannot just get things online. Kung baga talagang you have, of course, to simplify things, you have to create your own pre-recorded lecture if that's the case. Thank you very much, sir. That's all the questions from our YouTube viewers. How about our teachers here? Uh, I think, Ms. Dylan, wala pa ata silang tanong. But allow me to explain uh, yung paggamit ko muna ng tatlong applications kanina. Sure, so if you actually notice, uh, I use Kahoot for a class activity. So in other words, sa buong klase yun sabay-sabay. Of course, kapag sabay-sabay kasi ang klase, may mga bata talagang like sumasabay na lang ng pindot, di ba? Pindot lang ng pindot and then na like, they would be, kumbaga parang hindi nila, mga hindi talaga nagbasa, hindi nanood ng videos, kaya mababa ang scores. Pero kung napansin nyo kanina, paglipat natin ng quizzes, which is an individual activity, okay, na kanya-kanya, hindi na lumalabas yung question sa screen, right? Sa sa screen ni teacher, doon na lang lumalabas sa, sa, sa mga gadgets ng mga viewers natin, ng mga uh, kasali kanina sa activity. Yun kasi, kaya that's why, the reason why I did that, ako kasi naniniwala ako na pag may class activity or may group activity, dapat may individual assessment pa rin. Kasi doon sa individual assessment, let's say for example, nakita natin si student na ganito, mali sa lahat o sobrang baba na that means that that student needs already a help. Kumbaga talagang you have to, ano na, uh, reach out. Kumbaga hindi na pwede yung makikisabay lang sa the class discussion. Pag mababa pa rin siya doon, eh definite of course, you have to do something about it. And also, if you notice sa kahot, medyo nahirapan lang tayo kanina kasi, yun nga, kumbaga, the teachers of course were not really familiar with the text. But of course, if the text would be given to them ahead of time, then mas mahaba yung oras sila maintindihan yun. Ang pinaang ginagawa ko po doon, I'll give you the tip, para at least maging student-centered pa rin siya, uh, you ask the students, okay, can you please explain your answer? And then, of course, the answers would be coming from them. So, walang nangyayaring lecture kay teacher. Pero if, let's say, for example, the teacher, the, the students are able to get the correct answer, hal halos lahat sila, no need to explain things. Kasi ibig sabihin, kung mataas ang score nila doon, uh, may naintindihan na nila. You can try to clarify lang, elaborate kapag kailangan. But if it's not needed, then you can already proceed to the next set of items. And then yung Padlet, of course, dito talaga may sharing talaga tayo. Yun nga lang, of course, because I explained, uh, I gave time, of course, for our student teachers earlier to, uh, to really, of course, understand uh, the text. Kumbaga, to read the, the, the text and, of course, watch the videos. Uh, the video that I forwarded to them, medyo kinapos tayo ng oras, of course, for that. That's why I intended, I, I mean, uh, the, the plan was really to make it as, as an assignment. But uh, in a regular class session, like for example, if you're given an hour or one hour and 30 minutes to meet your class, magagawa mo to sa klase eh, nang hindi mo na kailangan ipa-assign. Ayun po. Thank you very much, sir. Another question from our YouTube viewer. It is from Roderick Padua. Nire-record niyo po ba, sir, yung mga scores ng students from the applications that you use. Yes, these are formative exercises. So this, if these are formative exercises, we have to be reminded that formative exercises are recorded but are not graded. 
So, kailangan pa rin po natin i-record yung mga yun as much as possible. Kasi po, of course, this provides us data na sino ba yung nakakaintindi ng lesson, sino ba yung hindi nakakaintindi. May feedback tayong pwedeng mabigay to actual, uh, through, use, through the use of these applications. But don't worry, kasi ito po mga applications na to automatic naman po yun, merong item analysis na nadagenerate na, na, na right after, of course, you finish answering. Uh, you, you finish, of course, using the specific, for example, Kahoot. May, may free na uh, item analysis na pwedeng gamitin. Thank you very much, sir. That's all the questions we have for now. Any last reminders to our viewers for today, po? Yeah, last reminder. I, I think we, we just need to be reminded that, of course, teachers in the 21st century, okay, we must already use student-centered activities. It's not a reason na online. It's not a reason na uh, distance learning kaya tayo magle-lecture. No. We have to understand that if we're going to do lectures, the probability of the students understanding the lesson being taught, mababa talaga. Right now, ang, ang isa sa mga challenges sa ating mga teachers, of course, student uh, uh, engagement, di ba? Yung response nila. So, in order for us to be able, of course, to get these responses, qualitative responses from our students, then we have, of course, to offer an education fitting dun sa kanilang learning preferences. And of course, we, uh, with, with, with that having said, kailangan talaga natin ma-maximize yung technology. Kailangan natin, of course, ma-maximize yung pag-provide ng student-centered activities. Of course, uh, because of that, we will be able to produce and offer still quality education in the, uh, to our students. Okay. Thank you. There we have it. In behalf of Webal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for today for this very, very interactive, creative, and insightful demo teaching session. It is an honor to have you with us today, sir. And to all our Webal viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. We also encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Webal Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.